Hey everyone and welcome to another Unreal tutorial. Today we'll be looking at editor functions and blue utilities. The blue utilities are a slightly newer addition to the Unreal Engine, so I think you'll need either 4.19 or 4.2 and above. I'm going to be using 4.2 just to be safe, but for all of the functionality that you'll see here, you will need to be using one of the newer versions. Now just to explain what these are, these are going to be functions that we can call inside of the editor, so outside of runtime, and generally these types of things will be used to make a designer's job easier or even your job as a programmer a little bit easier so that you don't need to keep redoing things and you can break certain functionalities down to simple one press functions in the editor. So I'm just going to demonstrate what I mean with a quick game. Now this is something that I made for a game jam and this is where this all came about as I kind of shared this previously and people seemed interested and I don't have the existing project unfortunately I've lost that so I'm not going to be able to show exactly what I did but just to try and explain what's happening where the player starts is the center of a grid and then all of these nodes which are the target for the player to get to afterwards these are all actually spawned by an in editor function so I had something set up so that I could press whether I wanted the surrounding grids to be spawned on the north east south or west of the current grid and it would create this connector plus the grid node and it would uh, align those up correctly. So then you could select the next grid and do that same thing again. So it was a very, very quick and easy way to make these levels. I also then added options to select certain nodes, the nodes that you have here, and add the collectibles on them. And then the final one as well is gonna be the, the destination node. And again, these are all toggleable and changeable in the uh, editor functions that I made. So this is using the old system, and this is what I believe are normally referred to as the editor functions, which is quite standard in, inside of game engines. And I'm gonna move on past this and look at blue utilities. And just to show the complexities, it does allow uh, what I had here, things like having different nodes all connecting together and it would know what the neighbors were so that we could get the uh, detection of things like which nodes connect to another and so on so that's the kind of thing this can be useful for as i said i don't have this project anymore so i'm not going to go in depth on quite that scale but hopefully that just shows the kind of use that these can have so inside of the engine what i have here this is a pretty blank project i've created two actors and you don't need anything special to get the editor functions working one thing i did want to mention though is i have seen what we're about to go through described as blue utilities i don't think that's quite the correct terminology i'm not 100 percent sure but what we're doing is we're just simply going to be converting a function or a custom event to a function that's accessible in the editor so i think they're just uh, the official term for them would be the editor function so inside of my bp underscore actor this is just a standard actor class with nothing in here at the moment so you can follow along with this if you wanted to we can create an editor function quite simply by creating a standard custom event and then we'll give the custom event a name so we'll just call this the editor function and the only thing we need to do to get this to actually become an editor function is come over with the custom event selected and toggle the call in editor boolean check just here now what that will do is if we hit compile we'll need to drag the actor into the world and we'll actually want to test this as doing something so we'll just pull off of this and do a quick print string and we'll just let it say hello when you press this nice and simple but it will get the point across so with this in the world we can now see that under the default because we haven't given the custom event a category which of course you can do with functions and i will just demonstrate that in a moment as well that this can work with functions too but now if we press this every time we press this we'll see that we get the hello printed so this is just a simple function or a custom event being called from our graph outside of runtime via the editor so that is the simple way to use an editor function now one thing i wanted to mention is that this is quite limited and restricted in what you can do because you can't do things like adding inputs so if we were to try and set a custom string variable uh, by putting either an input or an output into a custom event or a function when you're doing this this will unfortunately stop it working we can see it's actually just disappeared uh, we've got the bp underscore actor selected and it's disappeared altogether even if you don't have this hooked up it still won't let you use the editor function so when you're doing this you need to make sure that you're not passing any information to or from the function you're using and just to uh, confirm as well that this will work with functions and I'll just call this the new editor function. Same way, again, we just want to make this callable in editor. We'll hit compile, and we can do the same thing in here. We can just do another print string. 
Just going to change that to say new so we know which one this is referring to. And we'll see, we now have two buttons. And if we press the new one, we'll get the word new. So it works in exactly the same way. The only difference, like I mentioned, is you can come in with a function, change the category over here, and we'll make that uh, editor function. And now we can see that that's dropped it below its own section. So this is going to be a really handy way if you want to drop these into functions to keep all of those kind of segregated and easier to find as well. Now, the other thing I thought would be useful to know is that you can store data. So although this isn't happening at runtime, this class will store information, uh, references and things like that. So as an example, in the new editor function function, I'm just going to call a spawn actor node. Now, the class I've created is another actor class. I've called it BP underscore cube. It's just got a static mesh of cube. It doesn't do anything. It's nothing special. And what I'm going to do is when we spawn this, I'm going to add a reference to this. So we'll pull up of here and promote this to a variable. And I'll just call that cube ref. And then just before this, so we'll backtrack a little bit. I want to do an is valid check. So we'll see whether or not the cube ref is valid. So if we don't have a reference stored, then we haven't spawned anything yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to get the transform of the actor itself. So get actor transform. And quite simply, I'm going to plug this into the spawn transform. So if it's not valid, we're just going to change that over. Then I'm going to spawn the first cube exactly where this actor is in the world. Now, if it is valid, we want to do the same thing again. Uh, but this time, because we have a reference to the cube, just to show that we can store values, I'm going to get a reference to the cube that we now have. I'm going to get the uh, world transform, or I'll get the actor transform. And there are many ways that you can do this, but um, I'm just going to split the structure pin here and split the structure pin on this second spawn option. And I'm going to add a vector to a vector. So vector plus vector. And this is just so that we can get some visualization going on. I know the standard cube is 100 units around, so I'm going to give it um, the current value of the cube's location plus 150 units, so we've got a bit of a gap. And now if we come in and hit this button a few times, we should see multiple cubes being spawned above the previous reference. So at the moment, this is the, the last reference. So if we click again, then we're getting another cube, 150 units above where that cube was spawned. So nice and simple. And as I said, it's just a nice way to visualize uh, that we can actually store references and values and things like that. So this can be very useful, even though you can't pass values in, things can but still be stored, referenced and used in the function that we're making. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of these. Uh, we don't need these at all anymore. That is the editor functions. You can do as you wish with those. There are a lot of different things that they can be used for. And as I said, I made an entire kind of... Uh, level editor from this in the more rudimentary version of what we have now. So I'm going to come in and remove these just so that we have a clear scene. And what we want to do now is we want to add in our blutility functions. So these are actually a little bit more extendable. It doesn't have quite as many restrictions, but we do need to add a plugin for this. So we'll actually need to go to edit and then the editor preferences. We want to find the experimental section, which is just here. And somewhere down here, we should see the blutilities option. So it's not actually spelt with the uh, the color blue, so it's BLU and then utilities. And we can see here we have the editor utility blutility function. So if we click that, then that will add this to the project. And then finally, with that done, we just want to go back to edit, go down to the plugins option. And something I think that didn't show here before adding the experimental option, if we type in editor, then we can now get the option for our editor scripting utility. So it will tell us that uh, this is in beta version. Like I said, this is uh, experimental still and we will need to restart the project. So go ahead and do that. Okay, so with the project back open, I'm gonna go into my blueprints folder and I'm actually going to create this new blueprint class. So if we right click in the folder, we'll go to the blueprints drop down, and we can see there's a new option here now. And under the available options, we now have the blutility option, which is what we want. Uh, we're going to drop this and we want this to be an actor action utility. So this is going to be allowing us to create and work with actors. If you're using assets, then you've got the asset action utility. Uh, but just for simplicity and to get some things running visually, I'm going to use the actor one this time. So I'm going to call this the BP underscore blue till. Nice and simple. And two things to note here. So the first thing is that if you double click this, it looks as though nothing is happening. Uh, I'm going to keep this window open because this will actually be useful later. Things do update here and it is quite important and makes it easier to use things. The next thing is that to get this to actually open in a standard blueprint format that we want, so we're going to go to right click on this and then edit blueprint. So this will open a window in the standard kind of graph option that we're used to. And this is going to let us put some functionality into our blutility. Like I mentioned, though, I'm going to keep this one open because this is actually quite useful. Okay, so with our blue till open, what I'm going to do is create another function again. So we'll create a function, and I'm going to call this one spawn. So this is just going to be a, another very simple function, which is going to spawn a certain number of cubes uh, based on a for loop that we pass in. 
Like we saw previously, another important thing is that we have the call in editor tick, which from what I've seen so far, uh, this will do by default because obviously that's going to be the main uh, reason that you're using these classes. So just make sure that if not, the call in editor is still on. Uh, and I'm going to pull off of here, I'm going to get a standard for loop, give this an index of 10, and I'm just going to do something similar to what we did previously, but I'm going to spawn uh, spawn active from class. Once again, I'll pass in the cube class I've already created. You can do this with anything. And all I want to do is split the structure pin. And in fact, I want to do that a second time because I want to pull out the, uh, the, tr the location. So I split the structure pin again for the location. And I'm just going to change the x-axis this time based on the current index times a value. So integer times an integer. I'm going to times this by 110 just so we've got a small gap again. If you leave it at 100, they're going to be touching each other. And then we'll just pass that into the spawn transform. So hit compile and we should have our first function ready to go. Now, two ways that we can use this are if we come in with the blue utility saved and compiled, we can right click and we get a new option called the scripted actions. And we can see the function that we've created as the one that we called spawn. If we press that somewhere here, we should get 10 cubes from the zero point in the world with a 10 unit offset. Uh, now, the other reason that I wanted to keep this window open is that usually this updates. So what I'll do is I'll just double click and open this, uh, close this actually. We're then gonna go back, we'll double click and open this, and we now have the blue seal functions available. So I thought they normally updated, maybe I'd mis, uh, misremembered that. But we can also access all of the functions we create inside of this by just double clicking it, and that's done the same thing again. Uh, but we now have double the amount of cubes and um, they're just overlapping. So I'm gonna come in, uh, and in fact, I'm not gonna do this. Another thing I wanted to show is that this can then be really useful because we don't need this in the world, but we can keep adding functions to this and call them from anywhere. So I'm gonna go back in, edit this blueprint. Now I'm going to create another function, I'll call this one delete, and quite simply, I want to get all actors of class. I'm gonna make that the BP under underscore cube class that I've created, and for each of these, so just nice simple for each loop, I want to delete the current cube, so delete actor. Reason being, the whole idea of these uh, utilities and the editor functions is that they're going to make our life easier. So it's still not appearing there, so maybe that didn't work, and I just remember that incorrectly. So I'm going to right-click in the window, go to the scripted actions, and this time I'm going to delete, and we can see all of the cubes have gone. Uh, the visual representation took a little bit longer, but we did notice on the world outliner that they were removed. So this is a way that we can get actors that already exist and remove those. And this is just a nice, simple way that we can uh, quickly test things, decide that something didn't work, come back in, and then quickly get rid of them. So hopefully that will make sense so far. Now the very final thing I wanted to do is I'm just going to create one more function. I'm gonna, I'll call this one scale. And this is just to show that you can actually pass variables into utility functions, which you couldn't do with the editor scripting. So in fact, just for simplicity, I'm going to go back in to the delete function. I'm going to get all of our cubes again, so the, the logic which is uh, responsible for that. So on all of the cubes that we found, what I want to do this time is set the actor scale. So I'll set the actor scale 3D, and we will plug that in there. And then if we take the new scale, we can just plug this into the scale function. And this is going to expose something for us when we press the button that's going to be created. So one more time, back in here, we're going to right click the scripted actions. We're going to spawn the 10 cubes first of all, so we have them here. And then just in case you get the same issue, I've never actually had this before, but every time I use this function, I have to click into the window. So this project seems to be acting a little bit different from previous examples I've, I've made with this. So just in case you're wondering where your functions are, just remember you might need to click into the window. But with those done, with those spawned, we now have the actors for it to find. And I want to scale these. Now this actually brings up a, a nice little window here, and we've got the option here to pass in a custom scale variable for each of the cubes, or for, for it's going to do the same scale for all of the cubes, but we've got the option to customize it at least. So I'm going to make these half the size that they currently are, leave everything else the same, press OK, and we'll see that for all of the cubes, I didn't have to click into the window then, which is really odd, uh, but all of the cubes have now been scaled down by half. So that's just one of the really nice things about using blue utilities is that you do get the option now to pass variables into the function uh, and you get these pop-up windows. You can do the same thing. You can get the uh, actors materials and things and update dynamic materials to change the color of things. So again, that would be a really handy functionality for level design if you wanted to get all of a certain class of objects for a different biome or something and change all of their colors or all of their materials then you can do that really simply by a nice simple function here, passing in a variable which is the material or the texture type, 
And then when you select that function, you'll see that like we've just got there with the scale, you'll get a pop-up and you'll get to plug in what you want all of the things to change to. So you should have some nice flexibility using these. So hopefully that has proven useful. And of course, as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found these useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.